It sounds a bit radical, but just listen to me for a minute. What if your body has the best ability to heal from cancer? Your own biology is more important than chemistry. And healing isn't about poisons or power, but it's about unlocking the potential that already exists within us, our God-given ability to heal. After all, so much of modern cancer treatment has its roots in warfare. Chemotherapy came from mustard gas from world wars. Radiation grew out of the same physics that came from nuclear weapons. So we've inherited a medical paradigm shaped not not from deep healing, but from short-term survival. Scared by fear, power, and control, and despite beautiful advances in deep learning, genomics, targeting immunotherapy, the metabolic theories of cancer, which have been coming forward, but pharmaceutical giants, insurance companies, and even elite medical institutions like the top Titan hospitals, these cancer industrial complex organizations still enforce a system that is often prioritizing money, prestige, and consensus over the lives of real people. So yes, there's corruption, and regulatory capture only deepens those cracks. In this episode, we're going to cover most important question I think that guides our future to solving the problem with cancer. What if the real healing of cancer isn't about a bigger weapon, but about waking up the army inside our body that God has already given us, our immune system, and our body's ability to precisely use that to treat? I'm Dr. Dino Prado. For the last 25 years, my team and I have helped thousands of patients who've already failed the top cancer hospitals across the country. 18 years ago, we began working on the Cytoglis Adoptive Immunotherapy, we call AIT, using the body's own natural killer cells and dendritic cells, the cancer cell vaccine, to recognize the cancer and get rid of it. The right combinations to awaken your immune system with a highly customizable cancer treatment. The body's own immune system is the most important anti-cancer drug you'll ever find. Modern medicine often tries to suppress it instead of partnering with it, and that's one of the difference between the standard of care oncology and precision oncology. We'll walk you through this in this episode and how we can end this war model for cancer and work on rebuilding our immune system. And really how the cancer industrial complex keeps this model in place, not for patient outcomes, but because of billables. Now, why your immune system is so important, let me get into this, especially your natural killer cells and dendritic cells, they're the real key to long-term healing. What we've been doing with AIT, a toddless adoptive immunotherapy in our international facility is using multi omics to custom target treatment. So these natural killer cells and dendritic cells are all built off of N of 1. So first we run deep testing on the patient to find out where the breaks are in their immune system. And then we take the practical steps using cellular biologics to grow the cells, expand them and teach them to kill tumor. So that's what's different. That's what's really important. And so if you understand how the immune system works to fight cancer, it'll give you a huge advantage. Let's start with some uncomfortable history. Chemotherapy, as I said, didn't start as an idea for healing. But during the world wars, doctors noticed soldiers exposed to mustard gas had wiped out their white blood cells and lymph tissue. And out of that horrific observation, scientists thought if this poison kills fast growing cells, maybe it'll kill cancer too. And that led to the first chemotherapy. Radiation therapy came right after the discovery of x-rays and radium around 1895 or the early 1900s. And the same radiation that can burn your skin, damages your DNA, was turned into a weapon against tumors. So now to be clear, chemo and radiation have saved lives, yes, and have extended lives. I'm not denying that. There is a portion of patients that are helped with that. But in late stage cancer patients, these treatments to me appear to be archaic. Many of you are listening and you're here today because you've either used these tools or you know somebody who has. What I'm going to try to show you is that we have a future that's very bright, that's transforming this entire space, and it's called precision oncology. But it all has to do with building the immune system. So here's the problem. The whole paradigm was built on kill the tumor at any cost, not restore the terrain so your body can stay cancer resistant for life. Rebuild the immune system. This changes everything. It's like using flamethrowers to get rid of a weed. You scorch the weeds, but you also scorch the soil. Into that soil, we've layered huge hospital systems, pharmaceutical companies that literally make billions and billions of dollars. The U.S. Cancer Care now spends around $200 billion a year, projected to exceed $240 billion a year by 2030. And yet many patients still relapse, suffer, and die from cancer. So we need to go to another place with this. We need to talk about what nobody wants to talk about. So not only can these treatments cost a lot, but not always give us the outcomes that we want. And that's the unfortunate part of the cancer industrial complex. So we're going to talk about how does this war-based model stay in power? A big part of this is clinical trials that are approved. Anytime I'm talking to somebody about the subject, we'll bring in the random double-blind placebo clinical trial, considered the gold standard for drug approval. I won't deny that. It has its place. But today, with deep 
deep learning, technology, mapping. We can use N of one. It's a treatment plan that is built custom to the patient's markers, thousands of markers, and then selecting medicines on label or repurposed or phytotherapeutic or immune modulators or cancer cell vaccines that are custom built to the patient. This isn't what we see today. Today, what we see is large population health, one size fits all. It's basically a big pharma derived system that's coming out of the major hospitals in the United States. But when it comes to N of one precision oncology, this is where we see great improvements. We're looking at a thousand plus markers, custom building medications, using minimally invasive approach with image guided surgery, technology, integrative care, oxygen therapies, phytotherapeutics, restoring the body's milieu so that the body, which is the best tool we're be given to heal our own immune system, can build the memory and get rid of the cancer. So here's another key point. Recent analysis has shown us about 70% of the modern oncology trials are funded by the industry. And the industry sponsored trials now enroll about eight to 10 times more patients than federally funded trials in adults. That doesn't mean everyone is corrupt, but it does mean that the system is strongly biased towards drugs, big pharma, instead of being biased towards the targets the patients need, not trying to fit a circle in a square peg, if you will. Simple, single drug questions are kind of outdated. We need to look at combinations and how they work for individuals. And two patients with the same cancer types are going to have very different markers. And today, what the FDA will often do is look at endpoints. So if the tumor is shrinking, they'll get fast track approval and that drug will get to the market quickly and oftentimes not lead to lengthening of life. On top of that all, we see this repeated concern over and over again in mainstream journals and panels about regulatory capture agencies and especially around accelerated approvals without knowing whether these drugs are going to work instead of custom building the drugs for each patient. So we're looking at tumor shrinkage. What we really should be looking at is survival. How long are people living? And more importantly, with what quality of life? And I can tell you that's where we're going to get remission of cancer coming, where people stay long-term healthy, the cancer goes away and doesn't come back. A system that optimizes patient care and what the patient needs, an N of one, and not an industrial system. That's a one-size-fits-all. And the secret to all that is your immune system. Long before there was radiation and long before there was chemotherapy, there was our body's God-given immune system. I've mentioned this in other episodes, but about 10,000 times a day, your immune system deletes cancer cells, early cancer cells that are developing. And that's how powerful your body is. So if we can teach your body how to recognize a cancer cell, it's going to go away. So the first star of the show is the natural killer cell. This cell is like nature's assassin. It's a sniper. It takes out the cancer. If your natural killer cells has the right information, the cancer doesn't stand a chance. It'll get removed. And it gets its information from a dendritic cell. So this is like a detective. It gets the mug shots, the fingerprints, and all the information and passes it to the natural killer cells. Then the natural killer cells do the work. These distinct immune cell types are relatively young in terms of research today, but they're hugely important. So God built a Navy SEAL team into our bloodstream that can go to the brain and kill cancer, to the bone, anywhere. And hundreds of years of ignoring it has, I think, put us into trouble. But we're starting to get immunotherapy coming back in forms of PD-1 inhibitors. But what I'm talking about here is cancer cell vaccines, building them custom to each patient. So we're not relying on just a drug, but on a full concert that's helping the immune system do its work. So these natural killer cells, they can get damp, they can get suppressed and outnumbered. How? They can get chronic inflammation and chronic infections, toxins, heavy metals, root causes of cancer that weaken the immune system. So we want to clean those things out of our body. Stresses, poor sleep, nutrient deficiencies, enzymatic deficiencies, vitamin deficiencies, and Yes, aggressive chemotherapy and radiation wipe out your immune system and can contribute to your natural killer cells being exhausted and weak. The dendritic cells are such an important piece of this because they're the master teachers, they're the detectives. They tell the natural killer cells what to do. They give the information and their job is to pick up the tumor information, the new antigens called neoantigens and passing them on to the natural killer cells. And so they do this effectively. They travel to the lymph nodes and present this information to the T cells and they go out and kill. This is the key in my opinion into shutting cancer down, just giving it the right information. In fact, the same is true for viruses. They literally bridge our innate and adaptive immune system, and they're crucial for strong anti-tumor T-cell response. So without healthy dendritic cells and T-cells, we can't fight cancer. Now, I want to talk about the DAMPs, damage-associated molecular patterns, which I've talked about in other episodes. These are the danger alarms of the body. They actually orchestrate the fighting response in your body, if you will. Let your dendritic cells and natural killer cells know where to go. Think of the DAMPs as a little danger signal 
released by these damaged dying cells. In the right amount, they wake up the immune system, work beautifully, and create an immunogenic cell death, which is what we want, creating a concert for the body to awaken and heal because the body's going to do the healing on its own. But only when we use the right targeted treatments that actually encourage the damps, micro doses, targeting, strengthening the immune system. But if we use high dose chemotherapy, it can drive the damps to be too strong, cause chronic inflammation, recruit suppressive cells that block your immune system and make the tumors resistant to your immune system. So this is what's commonly missed in oncology today because of lack of testing and targeting. So again, the goal is not just to kill the cancer. The goal is to kill them in a way that turns your immune system on, not off, and restores the body's own innate healing to remove the causative agents, restore immunity, and change the milieu, the environment that is not favorable to cancer. So that's why almost two decades ago, we started on a Tagus adoptive immunotherapy work with precision programs, because we knew that in certain cases, people needed new neoantigens. Their dendritic cells needed to be new and they needed new information. Their natural killer cells needed all the right information so that it could go after the tumor. And we needed a way to harvest and collect these without just going in and surgically removing tumors. We needed to be able to do it from their blood. And so we developed this process where we collect the blood through apheresis. We expand the cells. We give them the right peptides, the right damps messaging with the new neoantigens that we prime from the tumors. And now our natural killer cells and dendritic cells are tuned in to go after the cancer and provide us the best opportunity to heal. So we reinfuse them back into the patient and we have seen in certain cancers some amazing responses. And what we're learning is that the more data we have on the deep learning, the more we take the guesswork out and the better the natural killer cells were. So it's not just cellular therapy. These are cancer cell vaccines. And then we add all the right nutrition, getting rid of all of the toxic foods, bringing in all the things that help improve the gut microbiome and immunity and establish health. These are the key pieces. So the typical N of one plan might include root cause analysis, changing the milieu in the body, targeting the cancer with all the right targets, DNA, RNA, transcriptomics, immune spatial biology, custom developing the immune system to fight the cancer, changing the diet and lifestyle so it's not favorable to cancer, and putting them all together in a unique way for the patient. On-label, off-label repurposed medicines, phytotherapeutic, natural agents, immune modulators to help our patients heal. This is the key. This is where we see the importance of cancer treatment. And AIT has been a powerful international therapy for us that we've developed and over the years improved upon. So when you put all these things together, I believe strongly your body has its ability to heal itself and the immune system is the star of the show. Get all the toxins out, clean out all the infections. That's going to help. Improve the oxygenation of the tissue. That's all going to help. That's integrative adjuvant supportive care. But then precision helps us dial it into the next level. What are the exact targets we need to shut down the cancer and rebuild the immune system? That's the difference. So this is what I want you to take away from all of this. Let me give you a few practical lenses and questions. When you talk to your oncologist, ask, why aren't you monitoring my immune function? What is the treatment you're doing to help my natural killer cells and dendritic cells to fight my cancer? Is there a way to combine these both standard of care treatments with integrative care and immune supportive strategies so that I can heal or have a better chance of healing? You may or may not get satisfying answers, but just asking starts to shift the conversation. Think the right combinations, the right terrain. There's not one magic bullet. Cancer usually isn't one pathway. It starts many years before we see the tumors and it's a change of diet, lifestyle, milieu, immunity. But when the cancer is already spread and become aggressive, we need to be targeted on all the right combinations to shut it down so we can help the body go back to its normal natural health. That's the power of N of one. That's the power of precision oncology, not the one size fits all model. It doesn't really work that way. Our goal is to overcome resistance and help the cancer go away by reestablishing the immune system. And so all you can do as a patient or a caregiver is ask the right questions, get your doctors on the right track. And if they're not there, find someone who is because that's the difference in cancer treatment. Now, I hope this was helpful. And this gave you a better understanding of what to ask your doctor. Now, what can you do every day to support your immune system? And you can even put this into AI and build your own plan. Now, I like beta glucans. I like fermented foods, get your gut microbiome operating well, acromensia, bifidobacteria. You can watch my other episodes on this. Get rid of all the refined processed sugars and foods and start eating organic, clean foods. Build your immune system. Make sure you're taking in the right proteins, everything high quality. Make sure you're getting some exercise and breathing. All these things are going to help your immune system better sleep at night. All these things. And I've already built programs on that. But these are the things that you should ask your doctor. Remove the chronic stress. Get the right activity. Help your body heal. Get the right thoughts in your mind. That's why I like the scriptures because they give us the thoughts of living, life-giving words instead of the negative ones. And you have to have a desire to live and you have to take away 
some of the stressful words that oftentimes are hurting you. Calm your body, nourish your body, remove the inflammation. These are all things you can do that are very powerful and they make a difference. Our biology is more than chemistry. Healing isn't about poison or power. It's about unlocking the potential that is already within us, that God has given us. Yes, there is a cancer industrial complex. Yes, there are powerful financial and regulatory forces that keep us stuck in a war model. But I've also seen something else in 25 years. I've seen patients who were told there was nothing more they can do and they responded when they re-engaged their immune system. I've seen families find hope again because they're treating the cause and getting to the root cause of the problem. And my prayer for you in this episode is it awakened you. It makes you want to ask more questions, become more empowered and look for the right answers by asking the right questions and guiding your care. I hope this was helpful and may the Lord bless you on your journey to healing. 